Thanks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com. You're joining me on board good old Narrowboat Tilly, and of course, welcome to the Narrowboat Diaries. Now, this is going to be an interesting episode, I hope, as there's actually going to be a lot of sun to be seen in this, as well as a few examples of how unbelievably brutally changeable the weather has been over recent times, and ultimately, this is going to be a video that takes place almost entirely on the Montgomery Canal, just a little branch that's being restored off the main Langothlin line. And again, it's the sort of beautiful rural scenic canal that is everything that I love. But the fact that it's not on the main line through to Langothlin means that it is also extraordinarily quiet, especially as you get further and further down because there's people who are maybe on holiday or maybe just on private boats who might go down onto the Montgomery just for a night or so, so they don't even go all the way to the bottom in some cases. So yeah, I suppose without further ado, let's stop looking at this and let's get out there and enjoy some absolutely beautiful, I mean, just fantastic, you're going to see some lovely sights in this I promise. Right, let's get to it. So this video is going to be basically travel, 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 starting straight away with the trip that my granddad and myself made down through the Frankton Locks from the Langothlin Canal onto the Montgomery. And really, you can see we started with a bit of an overcast grey day here and the next day is also going to be similar to that. Definitely times that you want to be wearing your boat coats to avoid the passing showers and so on. Now, one of the things I enjoyed about this particular day going down through the Frankton Locks was we were the last boat going down, and I'm not sure if there were any boats at all um, coming up towards us. That's where we moored, just in the little basin at the bottom of the locks. And then this was the following day, me taking a solo trip for, I don't know, about an hour and a half, maybe, well, probably longer than that, just going down to Queen's Head. So you'll see everything unfold here. So I got myself all in a mess at this little tiny lock, only a matter of inches the drop in water here, but because of the slight breeze, slightest breeze ever, ended up getting dragged over to the other side. And yeah, we'll ignore that. We'll skip ahead. You'll see when we leave this um, lock that it didn't all go to plan, even on the exit. But really, what I liked about coming down through the Frankton Locks was we were basically the last boat going down and there were no other boats around. So we had like this sort of totally peaceful environment to get down. And as we were the last ones there, somebody from the Canal and River Trust, not the sort of lock keeping volunteer, but just another chap who happened to be about at the time, came down and did the locks um, with us. So obviously that helped out a great deal, especially as my granddad hadn't done any locks for a while. So obviously all help is always gratefully received. And I've said many times, there's an awful lot of people willing to help you out, out on the canal. And as you can see here, it was a, another overcast day and there's nothing really major to report about this trip apart from there is an amazing amount of kayakers and canoeists around. Never seen so many in one stretch of boating, I've got to say. So that made it a little bit fun coming to various points. But you can see and when you're travelling down here and the only people that I saw on this trip were maybe one, maybe two dog walkers and the people in kayaks paddling away. So it's like... Again, how perfect. I'm not sure if this was a bank holiday weekend as well that this happened, but definitely don't quote me on that because that's probably wrong. Um, so I've stopped here for, a, I'm not sure if that was only a day as well, but basically me and my granddad came out to the boat with some um, coal to drop off as the coal boat doesn't come down the Montgomery and I'd done some poor planning and got myself stuck. And then it was such a beautiful day when we got out to the boat with these supplies that it was like, well, we can't possibly not boat a little bit further and head down through just another lock. This is one of the Aston locks at Queen's Head. So again, the boat trip that was maybe half an hour here, you are seeing a clip that's not from the same day. This is from Easter Sunday, possibly, one of the Easter weekend days. And you can see it's a beautiful blue sky. Then, as I leave the boat to cycle into town, only 20, 25 minutes, you can see it's starting to get a little bit windy, but would you believe within 10 minutes that this happened? My friends, this is hailstones that you're seeing that's creating this white sort of snow-like misty effect. And they are absolutely bouncing down, being driven by the wind so hard sideways that I've literally had to stop biking and shelter next to the street. I cannot explain to you how unbelievable this weather is. I mean, this is 
today, no, like I say, I'm literally about to stop biking because it's hurting the side of my face so much and I can barely keep going forwards. Oh my giddy ass. Um, yes, happy Easter everybody. To think I just set out in an absolutely beautiful sunny day no more than 10 minutes ago. I think that that clip really helps to highlight why it's been so difficult to do anything that, well, basically anything involving going outdoors as you can go from a beautiful day to pouring down hailstones and all the rest of it and everything soaked through in the blink of an eye. So trying to arrange to meet people or do stuff or get out there and do any filming is all so much at the mercy of the weather that if the weather's not playing ball, you're done for. So this is a nice little evening trip I had down from Queen's Head through the bottom two Aston Locks, then mooring up at Maysbury just before it got dark. And you can see here as the sun started to come out again, despite the fact that the ground and everything soaked from all the rain that we'd had all day, I set out just after it had started to clear itself up and you ended the day with a nice uh, boat trip under a little bit of blue sky with the sunset yellow sort of striking the trees. Although at this point, as I'm saying that, obviously there's no evidence of any of what I've just mentioned. Um, but yeah, so I moored up down at Maysbury and then the following morning I did this last little stint just to get down to my little place that I like to moor up down here. So stopped at the services and did all of the dreadful deeds, emptying the toilets and what have you. And then again, under this perfect blue sky, I moored up just around the corner. And on this particular day, I ended up uh, hopping on my bike and cycling up to my friend's house in town. And from here, town is literally a very short bike ride, maybe about three miles to my friend's house in town. And that's literally from the boat to their doorstep. So can't really argue with that. Lovely stuff. And yeah, but this is one of my favourite places to go kayaking, as this is where I first well, ever went in a canoe, and that's from this little um, place called Canal Central that does uh, horse boat trips and all sorts of things like that, just down through that bridge. And really, I think that because this was also where I set out from when I had the idea to first live on a boat, when my friend said, oh, you could live on a boat, that it's always had that special place in my heart, and I do love to just paddle around these little places here, but obviously after a few days it was time to turn around. You can only spend two weeks maximum on the Montgomery Canal, this whole sort of seven mile stretch. So obviously I've made the absolute most of it here by trying to split up as many little um, stints, no, split up the boat trip into as many short stretches as possible. So you've seen here one of the things that I love about having a boat and boat life and all the rest of it, that we've been through all these beautiful, amazing scenic places and we've been doing just little like half an hour here, an hour here, and basically enjoying it. And I mean, again, look at this. What more can you ask for? How perfect is stuff like this, to be honest? And being able to just wake up in the morning and think, oh, it's raining today. Well, no rush, no worries. We'll wait until it's a good day to go boating. Breathe in here as we've got a tight squeeze. Who is, I still don't really like. I wouldn't say I'm anywhere near as nervous as I used to be doing stuff like this, going through boats moored on each side. Um, but I still, I've got that thing of when I see these stretches and sometimes on the right hand side here, there's loads of boats moored up. So it's a real little tunnel of boats you're going through. And I'm like, oh, please just let me get through this unscathed. <laughs> and again, this is where I then chose to moor up on that day. For goodness knows, I mean, this must be about the fourth or fifth different place I've moored up on the Montgomery just for these little few days here, few days here. And again, I mean, there's just so much to be said about being able to do that and enjoy all of these different locations that, I mean, I'm truly grateful for this boating experience that I've had. So unfortunately, as time drew to a close, me and my friend had to make the last sort of stretch up to get back up to the basin just below the locks, ready to head up back onto the Langofflin Canal. Had a swan decide to join us in the lock here, a very random event. But this was a beautiful day and I've done a proper full length video just on this day in particular just because I wanted to share it with you where me and my friends did loads and loads of boating, like a few hours on the boats and then just travelling at no speed, no rush, no need to get anywhere or anything like that. And then um, we even let a boat overtake us at one point before we hopped on our bikes and did probably, I don't know if it was like 
about 15 miles, something around that sort of region, biked all over Shropshire, like well out of our way in the opposite direction to where our actual end goal was, got some food, fetched it back to the canal to eat it here, and again, I mean, it's just such an idyllic, sort of stereotypical, perfect day that I really can't say that there's much more I could have ever asked for. And it's those sorts of experiences that I'm going to miss over the next few months as I'm selling Narrowboat Tilly and figuring out what I'm going to do with my life. Now, this is the last day on the Montgomery as we, me and my granddad again went up through the locks and you've already seen the weather change from blue sky to really windy and overcast back to blue sky. But get yourself ready for the next little clip here as unbelievably... We literally, amidst all of that blue sky that you've just seen, had snow and sleet and absolute battering winds. And again, you can see just a little bit of snow in the air here. And this is what makes it so difficult, like I say, to try and plan or arrange or do anything whatsoever. You're now watching Tilly back on the Langothlin Canal, so I suppose I'll wrap things up and say thank you so much for watching. Please do check out my other videos for loads more boat life stuff and loads from the great outdoors. If you really want to help me out and super interested, please do check out my short narrowboat life books for the Kindle. You'll find links to those and all my Facebook stuff and all that sort of place that you might find loads of pictures and that all in the video description. But until the next time, have a fantastic day, keep it boat worthy and of course, farewell.